The journey of the average truth seeker begins upon the realization that the game of life is rigged against us from the start. Few can fathom how literally true this is. Before most are able to actively play the game, an obstacle is unwittingly placed in our way. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, the Rockefeller cartel, basically, they were philanthropic. They gave medical schools a bunch of money, and then they said, listen, we're giving you all this money. We really need to have our people on your boards to make sure our money's going to good places. So they basically infiltrated the medical schools and then changed the whole structure of what medical students were being taught. They also, you know, there's a cult, and I don't want to go deep into this Luciferian cult that is actually of Judaic origin, but this cult bought out all the medical journals and subsequently started promoting lies in their medical journals. For example, lies about alleged benefits of things like circumcision. So they have been able to mind control the population from what we call science, which is totally satanic, from top to bottom, what science has been promoting. If we look at what science has delivered in the form of fluoridated water, genetically modified foods, vaccines, all of this extremely harmful stuff has been coming through the scientific community, which is part of this Luciferian cult. And the medical system is a fundamental component of this that's also controlled by the same cult. This may be uncomfortable for people to hear, but understanding that we're dealing with a Luciferian force that has masterminded the means of mind controlling us and genetically altering us so that we are mutants. Literally, we have very little of our brain capacity actually functioning and most of our genetic potential is dormant. We have ultrasound, vaccines and pregnancy, induction, that includes the use of pitocin, pitocin being synthetic oxytocin, which tricks the brain, okay, and stops the production of natural oxytocin or undermines it severely, blocking bonding and destroying the baby's oxytocin receptor sites. Oxytocin, in its natural form, being the primary bonding agent that allows babies and mothers and fathers to bond and experience love for each other at birth, mm. they're damaging the babies for life. This is followed by epidural, which also tricks the mother's brain so that she's not producing the opiates and beta endorphins and all of these beautiful things that will also create powerful bonding and a powerful experience of well-being and love, okay, followed by cesarean section, which also interferes with bonding, followed by cord clamping, which cuts off the baby's oxygen supply, causing further brain damage, followed by eye ointments, which also block bonding. Eye contact is critical for the activation of the brain to produce the neurochemicals of love and bonding. They are blocking it with the eye ointments, followed by newborn hats that are blocking the ability of parents to smell the pheromones coming off the baby's head, which also activate the brains of the parents to fall in love and identify their child, followed by swaddling and followed by circumcision. Swaddling is a form of torture, unbelievable torture, and circumcision is the absolute, most unbelievable, disgusting attack that we could ever conceive of, strapping an infant to a torture board, literally strapping his arms and his legs to a torture board so that all he can do is move his head, sometimes shoving a pacifier in his mouth so he's choking on his screams while you systematically jam a sharp metal instrument into his penis, sticking it in between the foreskin, which is attached to the glands. 
jamming it in there and then ripping the foreskin off of the glands of the penis without anesthetic. Mm. 96% of the time, the babies are given nothing. I do believe the reason boys are becoming autistic so much more than girls is because of the extreme brain damage that is being caused by circumcision. Well, you could say it's trauma. It causes, a, I've heard you talk about disassociation, which yes. could contribute to those kind of neurological issues. Yes. And babies that are capable of dissociating, not all babies do this. That's something I, people should understand is those who are involved in trauma-based mind control are looking for the children who can dissociate. Because those are the ones, those are the ones that can be tortured again and again without dying. Interesting. Yeah. Very dark. Not all babies can disassociate, but it can dissociate, but uh, ultrasound is also causing babies to dissociate. There's a lot going on. There's, there's a lot going on. Right. And cer- certainly with circumcision, boys are being pushed to dissociate. People don't realize that the first 10 days of life, the first two weeks or three or four weeks, are the most critical for their entire life. They need to have that eye contact, emotional contact, body contact to be comforted and to be loved. And uh, if that isn't there, for whatever reason, mother's unable to provide it, hospital situation, uh, the, the the difficulties in the in the makeup of the parents, uh, the child has no choice but to protect themselves by going out of contact, withdrawing, and uh, that's the beginning of it all. The neurological effects of circumcision are well documented. Perhaps the most damning study was conducted by Paul D. Tanari as a graduate student working at the Department of Epidemiology at Kingston General Hospital. The researchers tightly strapped the infant onto the traditional plastic circumstraint, the head immobilised using the standard surgical tape. The entire contraption was put into the MRI chamber several minutes to generate baseline data of the normal metabolic activity in the brain. Readings were taken as surgery was performed, without an anaesthetic, of course. Analysis of the MRI data indicated that the surgery subjected the infant to significant trauma. The greatest changes occurred in the limbic system, concentrating in the amygdala and in the frontal and temporal lobes. A neurologist who saw the results postulated that the data indicated that circumcision affected most intensely the portions of the victim's brain associated with reasoning, perception, and emotions. Follow-up tests on the infant one day, one week, and one month after the surgery indicated that the child's brain never returned to its baseline configuration. In other words, the evidence indicated that the brain of the circumcised infant was permanently changed by the surgery. Unfortunately, the study was shut down when they attempted to get it published. All of the researchers who participated in the study were called before the discipline committee at Kingston General Hospital, who severely reprimanded them, stating that male circumcision was legal under all circumstances in Canada, and that studying the adverse effects of circumcision was strictly prohibited. The team wasn't allowed to publish the results of their study, and what's more, they were forced to destroy them. The penalty, if they failed to comply, was immediate dismissal and legal action. Other studies have found that these procedures often produce symptoms which are similar to those of childhood sexual abuse, including disassociation and the development of a negative body image. The majority of boys circumcised as children and adolescents meet diagnostic criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder. The first days of life after birth are the most important. But nobody knows that because there's no memory of what happened to us when we were little. And because we have no memory, it's always thought, well, if I can't remember it, it can't have effect. Which is so clearly 
not true and proven by in so many ways dreams hypnotism all of these things bring up stuff that are completely out of our conscious awareness during our waking life so all of this is going on inside of us and it's held within us and it's never forgotten So one has to wonder, why is it specifically pushed there? And what are its effects? This lengthy quote from circumcisioncomplex.com goes some way to explain it. The foreskin holds about 75% of penile sensitivity. It is densely populated with receptors and engages a large region of the brain. Its removal frees substantial brain potential and triggers a cortical reorganization that tends to reutilize that part of the brain, thereby significantly transforming how the mind functions. Circumcision eliminates a great part of sexual sensitivity. It causes an informational gap in perception of pleasure. The insufficient sensory input stimulates abstract reasoning, while the reduction of the pleasure energizes and intensifies it. As a result, pedo-circumcision causes a predisposition toward development of idealization in adults. It favors piety, religiousness, and urges the perfection of other compensatory faculties. It enforces an artificial intellectual advance consistent with the experience and environment. Circumcision generates a deficiency of sexual gratification and induces a psychological complex that attempts to make up for it. The compensations of the circumcision complex are diverse. They range from sexual or general possessiveness to interest in impalpable reality that can sublimate in different levels of conceptual reasoning, such as religion, morals, philosophy, science and art. Such endeavours can, of course, be positive for the individual and for the society, but there are profound implications inherent in the elimination of sensitivity and detachment from reality. Abstract reasoning is inadequate in much the same way as oversimplification is inaccurate and fabricates prejudice. Circumcision draws the mind away from its natural course and towards simplified generalisations that substitute for the lost pleasure. The circumcision complex moralizes and encourages bias and segregation. The mental effects of circumcision reinforce the distinctions and identity boundaries of circumcising groups. When we take into consideration the group pushing circumcision on the Goy of America, it becomes obvious. It creates solidarity with the self-appointed chosen people. America will get behind Israel's agenda, fight its wars, etc. Could it also explain the puzzling emergence of Judeo-Christianity, which, when you think about it, is a contradiction in terms. The effects of circumcision upon the Jewish population carry even more profound implications, especially when you consider the ritual that goes along with it. The intense trauma and disassociation is subconsciously linked with the rabbi who becomes the handler for life. And this has been going on for 5,000 years or more. So when we take the science of epigenetics into consideration, it goes a long way to explaining the situation the world is in today.